Welcome back. So we've been talking about the sensitivity and complementary sensitivity functions uh, and the loop transfer function and what we want these different transfer functions to look like for good uh, compensation of model uncertainty, disturbance rejection, noise attenuation, reference tracking, and so on and so forth. Okay? But I said that the sensitivity function gives us a direct measure of the robustness of our system. And I also said that if I have a big peak in the magnitude of S, that's bad for robustness. So this is kind of a cartoon at this point, but I want to give you an idea of why this is the case. So this is actually a relatively deep um, and kind of complicated theory uh, in transfer functions and control theory. And it's built on a lot of background material, which I am not going to tell you about. So some of the background material is the Nyquist stability criteria. Um, and this goes way back before people were really using state space ordinary differential equation models, back when people were only using transfer function models um, or exclusive, almost exclusively, Nyquist came up with stability criteria of what K and P would look like when the system goes unstable. So he characterized criteria for when the system is about to blow up and become kind of non-robust or, you know, or unstable. And so we're going to kind of take for granted or use this Nyquist stability criteria um, in the derivation that, of showing that S is related to robustness. But I'm going to give you a little cartoon that gives some insight into this, okay? Because it's, it's kind of intuitively what we would think. So the idea is that I want my loop transfer function to be as far away from the point negative one in the complex plane as possible for all frequencies. So I'll write this out and I'll draw some pictures. But basically, if I take, um, let me draw some colors here. So if I take the complex plane, C, and I identify the uh, point negative one, and let's say that my transfer function, if I plot, um, if I literally take L, my loop transfer function, and evaluate it at I omega, and I plug in all the I omegas on the entire imaginary axis, so I kind of take the Bode plot, if you will, the frequency response of L, and I plot the real and imaginary part in the complex plane. Sometimes it'll, I don't know, I'm not really good at drawing this, but it'll look like something. And the closer it gets to negative one, the less robust that system will be when I close the loop. So I'm just telling you this as a fact. I'll give you some intuition for this in a minute. But if I plot L of I omega, this distance from this negative one point is essentially my robustness, my stability margin for this system. So if I close the loop, okay, then this system will go unstable if I increase k enough that this passes through the point negative one. So remember, if I just increase k by a factor of two, these values should kind of grow, okay? And so if I increase the, the gain k on my controller, I'll essentially get this, this loop transfer function growing until eventually it'll pass through the negative one point and the system will go unstable. Similarly, if my plant model P was twice as big as I think it, you know, if their true system is twice as big of a P as my model, then that would cause my L to be bigger and it might pass through this negative one point and go unstable and blow up. So this is kind of my robustness margin. The farther I am away from this negative one point, the more robust my system is. You can also see that there's some phase information. So if I add some phase to my, uh, if I add some phase to my system, so let's say there's a time delay here, what that's essentially going to do is it's going to take my loop transfer function and kind of rotate it. And it might be that when I rotate it, at some point, a point on this curve will pass through this negative one point and go unstable. Now, why is this negative one point so special? Um, we can draw kind of a simplified version of this diagram where we just have uh, reference, controller, plant, and y. Okay, it's a little faint. And if I subtract that, I get my little epsilon and I have my u. And so the idea is I can write my transfer function y to r 
I can write this as uh, y equals, and I think it's something like um, pk over 1 plus pk. Now, I'm drawing this for a single input, single dimensional u, single output, single dimensional y system. So this is just, I can do these divisions. Um, and now you can see that if this pk, if my loop transfer function equals negative 1, if pk equals negative 1, if my loop transfer function L passes through negative 1, boom, the system blows up at that frequency. Okay, So at whatever frequency, right, this is parameterized by frequency omega. And if I increase the gain k so that this passes through negative 1, boom, the system immediately goes unstable. Okay, now I'm glossing over a ton of stuff. I'm not stating this terribly precisely. If you want to know exactly uh, the mathematical formulation, you should read about the Nyquist stability criteria. And there's deep uh, theory about how this robustness actually is formulated in terms of this radius for my loop transfer function. But the takeaways are the farther my loop transfer function is from the negative one point in the complex plane, remember if I take my loop transfer function and evaluate it at i omega for all frequencies on the imaginary axis, I sweep out this curve. The farther that curve is from negative one, the more robust my system is. The more I can handle unmodeled dynamics in P, the more I can increase my gain K to get more performance, the more time delays. So sometimes my control logic is going to have some time delays on how long it takes to compute the control law. Maybe I'm actually doing some complicated stuff in here and my computer takes a millisecond. Well, is a millisecond enough to make my system blow up? Sometimes. If you have a really non-robust system, small time delays can make your system blow up. But if I have a robust system, if I'm really far away from this point negative one at all of the, the points on my loop transfer function, then I'm pretty robust to time delays and model uncertainty and increases in gain. Okay? And the cool thing is, is that this minimum distance, I drew it actually so that the minimum distance is uh, kind of along the real axis, but I could have it so that the minimum distance, let's call that um, m, the minimum distance, okay? This is very closely related to the sensitivity function, okay? So if I take a single input, single output system, I'm going to say s equals 1 over 1 plus my loop transfer function. Now, if, okay, so what I'm trying to say is this is, the closer that L is to negative 1, the bigger S is. That's simple, okay? The closer this is to negative 1, so if L close to negative 1, then S is big, right? I get 1 divided by a really, really small number. So the closer L is to negative 1, the less robust my system is, the bigger S is at that frequency. So if I have a really non-robust system, if I'm right up against this negative 1 point, then my S function is going to have some frequency where it gets really, really big because S is going to be 1 over epsilon, you something really small. L is going to be close to negative 1. So essentially what we have is that the max of s, the max of the absolute value of s over all frequencies is essentially a measure of how far we are from this, uh, from this point here. And so there's a precise way of formulating this. I'll do that in the next little segment. But basically, if if our system is non-robust, if L is close to negative 1 at any frequency, then S is going to be really, really big. So I'll have a, if I have peaks in S, then I'm essentially fundamentally non-robust. So a lot of control design and robust control is making L, the loop transfer, have the desirable properties while keeping the maximum of S pushed down as far as possible. Okay, so we'll talk about how to do that and we'll also talk about what the, there are some limits on how far I can push S down on some cases, if I have time delays, if I have right half plane zeros of the transfer function, things like that. But we'll get to that in a little bit. Thank you.